I always have high expectations for a new BMC team machine, and that's because for the last 10 years, this bike has consistently impressed with great all-round performers, everything you want from a road race bike. And a new version, I'm pleased to report, does not disappoint at all. So yes, this is the latest and possibly the greatest BMC T-Machine SLR. It's a bike that builds on foundation set down over the last 10 years and includes lots of race success, including the Tour de France many years ago. So lots of changes, and in this video, we'll go through the changes and talk about how it rides, what I like and don't like, and give my verdict at the end of the video. So let's dive in. For 2021 then, it's a brand new version of a team machine. But to be honest, if you look at the previous bike, it is hard to tell the differences, but there are some quite important differences that show the evolution of the team machine over the last 10 years. Firstly, it's available in two levels. That's the SLR01 at the top with a high grade carbon for a lighter frame and a one piece carbon handlebar and stem with full internal cable routing. And this regular SLR has fundamentally the same frame, the same geometry and all the same details, but a slightly lower grade carbon for a small weight penalty and a regular handlebar and stem with external K routing. So basically you choose a bike to suit your budget and then away you go. So the main changes to this bike compared to the last version are that it's disc brakes only. There is no longer a rim brake version. But that's fine with me. As you all know, I like disc brakes, so I'm fine with that. There is one really nice detail on this bike which I really appreciate and really shows BMC's usual attention to detail and really stands out from other bikes in this category. That is the lack of an exposed through axle on the dropout at the fork and rear triangle here. Really nice, really clean. And I'd love to see that on other bikes as well. The Team Machine was never really the fastest race bike. There were definitely faster bikes if speed was everything. But for that all-round appeal, good weight, good stiffness, great handling and comfort, it really ticked all the boxes. But this new version, it really is a noticeably faster bike. The new team machine has been working out in the wind tunnel as well, with all new tube profiles for the fork blades, the head tube, the down tube, and the seat tube and seat post as well. And as you can see on the down tube and the seat tube, the bike comes with bottle cages designed to minimize drag around the frame and bottle cage. This new bike just feels quicker all round, especially over my punchy rolling roads here in the Cotswolds. It whips up the speed much quicker, acceleration is fantastic, and it seems to hold higher average speeds much more easily, whether you're in a fast paced group or riding on your own, punching into a headwind. As well as the aero makeover the frame has had, they've also beefed up the stiffness of the rear end of the frame by claimed 20%, which is quite a huge amount over the old bike, which wasn't lacking in stiffness. So we've got really chunky chain stays, a press fit oversized bottom bracket, the big down tube as well, and very slender seat stays and a D-shaped seat tube. What's really impressive is how to achieve the extra stiffness, which you really notice when you're boosting up climbs or sprinting, without compromising the comfort, the compliance of the bike. Because as I found, the bike is pretty smooth for a race bike of this caliber. The stiffness is definitely there when you stamp on the pedals, whether climbing up a hill or just smashing on a flat road or sprinting for a town sign. There's no lack of urgency in the way it translates your, your power into forward motion it really is a very efficient bike. The really surprising thing is though, all that stiffness does not come at the expense of the ride quality because the smoothness of this bike is truly impressive. Despite only wearing 25 mil wide tires at the moment, the ride is well composed on my rough roads and doesn't beat you up on longer rides at all. And with space for up to 30 mil tire, fitting a 28 gives it even more smoothness and vibration damping on the really rough roads you might encounter. So 
So this ride quality, the smoothness, and the easy handling makes this a really easy bike to live with. The handling of the team machine has always been a highlight for me personally. I think it's how neutral and composed a bike is. It's neither twitchy or too lazy, not nervous or too relaxed, just strikes a real nice middle ground, a real sweet spot between the outright agility of a race bike you want, but be more relaxed for longer distance riding or high speed stability. The way the team machine handles is a real highlight and it comes down to a number of factors, but namely the geometry. So this is a size 56, one of six sizes available and fits my five foot 11 frame really, really well. The geometry is classic race bike stuff. So low stack, so short front end, long reach, giving that aggressive stretched out aero position you want for racing and riding fast, getting out of the wind and really going hammering tongs. So nice aggressive position. If you want more laid back position, the road machine would be a good option, a bit higher and a bit shorter. The geometry features a slacker head angle, a longer fork trail and a slightly longer wheelbase and chain stays, which contribute to that replanted relaxed handling the bike exhibits on the road. It's definitely not the, the fastest, most sharply responsive race bike, much more laid back, closer to an endurance bike without being an endurance bike. And really for me, hits a sweet spot. If you want a bike like this, that's fast, yes, but also easy to handle and will look after you on long rides, on rough surfaces. And as a race bike, you can live with on a daily basis. It doesn't have that sense of nervousness or kind of sharp, edgy twitchiness which are great in a circuits race, but not so good in the real world. This bike though is great in the real world and it's fantastic out here in the Cotswolds. And where the capability of the bike really, really shines is on descents and all sorts of descents as well. Steep, technical, tricky ones where the hydraulic disc brakes really help you out flat out fast, sweeping bends, where you've got good visibility to really let the brakes off. Yeah, the bike really shines. And when it comes to going back up the climbs, well, the bike is no slouch. Yes, it's not the lightest bike in the world, but it doesn't hold me back. You've got a massive stiffness from the bottom bracket and chain stays, helping to translate every ounce of energy, every watt you can muster up into forward motion and it really does climb very well. BMC offers a wide range of models to choose from to suit most price points. I'll put a link to their website down below so you can check it out and see what bikes suit your budget. This bike here costs 4,500 pounds here in the UK and is well specced for the most part. We have a Shimano Ultegra DI2 group set, so electronic shifting and hydraulic disc brakes and probably one of the best groups that you can buy. You might see my video on it, link above if you missed it. So fast, reliable, sharp, shifting, powerful hydraulic disc brakes with no noise, just works really well. And it's nice to get a 52-36 chain set with an 11-30 cassette, so good top end sprinting speed and nice low gear for climbing. Where the value for money on this bike does not look so good is with the wheels and tyres fitted on this model. Now we have a set of DT Swiss P1800 spline wheels, which are okay in some respect, nice shallow alloy 32 mil rim, but they're quite heavy, nearly 1800 grams for the set. Very narrow on the inside, 18 millimeters, which is not great for wide tires, when this bike will take up to 30 mil in a frame and fork. And we don't have the high grade ratchet free hub, you get on a 350 hub and higher. These are 370 hubs with the three pool free hub design. And then the tires are Vittoria Rubinio 25 mil wide tires, which are okay. They're hard wearing, but not the lightest or the nicest feeling or the lowest rolling resistance. So a tire and wheel upgrade can really unleash more performance from a team machine. As I found out when I fit some carbon wheels and some Prelly tires, which you might've seen on my Instagram, made the bike look better, made it lighter on the scales, and made it feel much faster out on the road. But it means spending more money on a four and a half grand you've already spent on a bike in the first place.
the capability of the bike truly is top level and up there with some of the best road bikes in this category. The handling is great, the speed is good on the climbs and descents. Surprisingly comfortable as well, despite only wearing 25 mil wide tyres. So time to give my verdict on this brand new BMC Team Machine SLR. And a bike I've always liked over the years, and this new version is even better. It's not a big step forward compared to the last version, but it's a nice evolution that brings some useful updates that you can really appreciate when you ride a bike. The performance is top class, really is very good. Perhaps not the fastest bike compared to some more aero bikes, but the handling is a real highlight here and decent comfort and some really nice attention to details. And in my opinion, really good looks as well. And it's a bike I'd happily buy and own. I like it that much. I can almost overlook the wheels and tires on this model. Anyway, that's my review on the BMC T-Machine SLR. Got any questions, put them down below. And if you found this review useful and interesting, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Some other videos you can watch floating around now as well. And I'll see you all again next time. Thank you so much for watching.